would like you all to close your eyes, please. This is the sound that ended my father's education, and I would like to tell you why, and why it is still of relevance today. Now, if you haven't done so, please open your eyes again. Let me take you back to Kabul, Afghanistan, 1971. Back then, it was in no way comparable to the Kabul that you would think of today, plagued by terrorism, corruption, and overpopulation. The Kabul that I am referring to back then in 1971 was a small, peaceful city of roughly 300,000 people under the reign of King Zahir Shah. In that Kabul, I would like to introduce you to Mohammed Yahya, a 16-year-old high school student who had a strong passion for literature and was literally craving for knowledge. One day, Mohammed Yahya, or to me, simply Boba, which means an Afghan dad, had fallen ill and was suffering from fever. Despite his illness, my Boba made it to class, which sounds like any other regular school day. But this was certainly not the case that day. His teacher falsely accused him of disturbing class. My Boba, knowing that this was not the truth, confidently stood up for himself and denied his teacher's accusation. In his traditional attempt to discipline my father, the teacher got up to slap him. But my Boba did something extraordinary. He did not let the teacher slap him and even stopped him, which resulted in this exact same sound that you just heard at the beginning. As a result, my Boba was kicked out of school, which also meant ultimately the end of his education. And that's exactly when he decided to go beyond borders. Refusing to believe that his opportunities in life and his educational pathway had come to an end, my Baba made it to Hamburg, Germany in 1971. Nowadays, you would call such a person an economic migrant, which is, according to the Oxford Dictionary, a person that travels from one country to another in order to improve their standard of living. Wow, what a broad term, standard of living, isn't it? It's quite abstract, but at the same time, so real. So how do you try to improve your standard of living? Education seems to be the key, allowing us to cross from one social layer to the other, essentially enabling us to live a self-determined life. But let me take you back again to Hamburg, Germany, 1971. So there is my Boba, a young Afghan man, 17 years old, with no high school diploma, not speaking a single word of German, but with big dreams and the ambition to make it in the new society. Not only refusing to believe that his education may have come to an end, my Baba was also actually quite confident that he could succeed in higher education. But without a high school diploma, there was a 0% chance to get into university. So, stubborn as my dad is, he took a drastic measure. He faked his papers and got accepted into university. I mean, I must say, he was quite a character, wasn't he? I mean, apart from this possible crime here, let's look at the real interesting fact. <laughs> he faked his papers and got accepted into university. And he performed really, really well. So why am I telling you all of this? Because it matters. It matters more than ever today. Currently, there are over 65 million people forcibly displaced worldwide and 33,000 more every single day. According to UNHCR, less than 1% has access to higher education, 
which leaves millions of people without the possibility to fully live up to their potential. Just like for Boba, lack of documentation is one of the main barriers that refugees face when it comes to accessing higher education. Think about that again. This means that there are millions of Bobas out there that have the capability to study, but are systematically denied to do so. And this is the case in the 21st century, where human capital matters more than ever to thrive in a knowledge society. I am inviting you to rethink with me our entire admissions systems. Let's think of a world where educational performance matters and not a piece of paper. Imagine to find an alternative, a more just way than that piece of paper that is not only determining your access to education, but also the quality of it. But before we jump into this new world of rethinking admissions, we should quickly take a look at where this unequal access to higher education is coming from. So why do we determine access mostly through A, the high school diploma, and B, the respective grade? One main reason is a very simple fact. Demand exceeds by far the supply. College capacities are limited, and therefore, selection is inherent. Probably one of the most illustrative examples for this would be medicine. I think we all have that one friend among our group of friends that really wanted to go to med school, but never got in. That friend will probably always ask himself, I wonder what if? And that makes me wonder what would have actually happened if he had just gotten the chance to go for it and try. To some extent, we can already see a development towards more variety in admissions, partly given through competency and admissions tests. However, none of these really overcome the initial issue of limited college capacities and ensuring an overall increased access. How about we find a way where people are freely able to just start with their choice of interest and are purely assessed on their educational performance? How about we let people explore the vast amount of sciences without even limiting them in the first place? This image that I am creating of rethinking admissions and creating truly equal access, I strongly believe that this can be done through blended learning and the effective use of digitalization. The vast amount of world-class open educational resources builds the very basis for this. MOOCs, massive open online courses offered through institutions such as Harvard, Stanford, or MIT, are allowing students from all over the world to enroll in courses irrespective of their background and prior educational pathway. Whether it's a course in Introduction to Computer Science provided by Harvard lecturers or a course in Game Theory, there is little what is not covered online. By founding Chiron Open Higher Education in 2015, we went a step further and created accessible digital curricula that are based on these open educational resources. Through our digital curricula, ranging ranging from engineering to computer science, we are widening overall college capacities and create more flexibility by mirroring the introductory phases of study programs digitally and use these as another way to qualify for universities. Through the combination of online and offline learning, blended learning, refugees can start studying online for up to two semesters and then transfer to one of our partner universities offline, with a proven track record that clearly demonstrates eligibility. What proves better that someone is equipped for studying than actually having studied and gathering credit points? At Chiron, we developed this model to support refugees in accessing higher education. But blended learning is an opportunity to revolutionize and innovate the access to higher education for everyone, everywhere, and any time. 
This is not only benefiting the individual that seeks personal fulfillment, but also overall society. The impact of higher education through blended learning can be clearly measured by taking the individual value and also the governmental value into account. This means that you will get, for every invested euro into higher education, 9.84 out of it. Increasing the access to higher education, therefore, provides a clear benefit for our entire community, which is mirrored in this significant social return on investment. Rethinking our entire way we provide access to higher education would have not only been 40 years ago relevant for my Baba and is nowadays urgently relevant for refugees, I truly believe that innovating admissions and pushing for a performance-based access will be a breakthrough for a more just and equal society for all of us and all future generations to come. If we all push for this together, joining higher education will be as easy as clapping in our hands for everyone, everywhere, and any time. Thank you very much.